Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys that are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. So I wanted to do a quick video. Um, I've been teaching you guys, obviously, uh, witchcraft is what I do. Um, but I've also been teaching you guys how to incorporate manifestations on your or in your everyday life as well as practicing and being able to strengthen, um, being able to manifest things into your life. And one of the things that I have found uh, that it just seems to be very difficult for a lot of people to really grasp or understand is the manifestation process. And a lot of the times uh, clients will tell me, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while. There are a ton of exercises that you can do that strengthen um, that help with your memory, with the subconscious and tapping into that, a whole bunch of things that we can do, right, to be able to manifest on our everyday lives. But a lot of the time, I think the one thing that is missed or misunderstood is the importance of feeling your way into things. So when I say feeling your way into things is feeling your way into the manifestation that you're trying to draw in. So let's get a little bit deeper into that and let's talk about things that you can actually do to help yourself, to teach yourself, to train yourself, as well as to really empower you to be able to draw in all of those things that you're wanting to manifest into your life, whether it's career, finances, business, whatever it is that you're doing, love for many. Um, and it goes and it goes really, really deep into you know, starting all the way from childhood to where we're at at this point in our lives. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So like I was mentioning to you guys, one of the most important things to understand about manifesting is having the desire, the desire of what it is that you're wanting to make happen or you're wanting to bring and draw into your life. Two, it is the importance of having the crystallized idea of exactly what it is that you want. Many would be very general and be like, as an example, I want abundance. I want to be financially stable. Um, when you ask them or when you ask yourself really what it is that you really want, is it money? Where is, where's the root, the root of that? Um, a lot of people have this misconception or misunderstanding of even not understanding themselves and what is drawing them to want that. And a lot of the times is the lack of that. So we have to understand the distinction between what we want, where we're at, and facilitate or understand the easiest route to get you from point A to point B. Now, if there is resistance for those of you guys that have been my clients for many years, those of you guys that know or have worked with me in the past, surrendering is a crucial, important process when it comes to spell work. Well, the same goes for uh, manifestation. So as an example, it is knowing exactly what it is that you want. It is trusting the process. It is believing without a shadow of a doubt that it is on its way. And then doing the exercises that are necessary to get you to that point without any resistance. So I think that's where a lot of people really have difficult with. Um, as an example, the easiest way I can try to incorporate this to help you guys understand a little bit better is understanding the notion as an example for people that have a tendency of being narcissistic. I'm sure all of you guys have dealt with one of those in your lives. And they are, they have such, they think so highly of themselves. They are so, you know, in retrospect, they're full of shit um, because they feel so entitled but it is their state of mind. It is their way of thinking about themselves that hasn't always been where it's at, but they become narcissistic in the understanding of the manipulation of people, how to say they can anticipate what, what you want them to say. Um, and it, it's, it, we go deep into that. But the point here is, have you ever wondered why narcissistic people have a tendency of always getting what they want? And the answer to that comes down to because they believe that they're able to attain that at whatever cost or whatever means. Now, I'm not telling you 
Um, as an example, if you want money, go out there and get it, you know, at by any means. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is understanding the relationship, how you feel about money. What what is the connection and relationship you have with money or with anything? Because you must understand that we are energy and energy is a frequency. It is a something that cannot be it cannot be uh, it cannot be broken it cannot be erased it cannot be diminished it can only be transformed so if there is a feeling of something within you that makes you feel a certain type of way that makes you feel like you have limits that makes you feel like you could never be able to attain financial stability no matter how much meditation no matter how much um journaling you do if you cannot connect the distinction, meaning the distance between where you're at right now and where you want to be and what in that area from point A to point B, what is in that middle part that is resisting, that is creating the resistance? If you cannot understand that, you cannot get closer to the manifestation. So again, if we're talking about finances, as an example, we're talking about uh, perhaps, you know, being able to feel like you want to manifest, um, let's just say $100,000 in a year, and that is something that you've never made in your whole life, then obviously you can force yourself to think that you know what it feels, but you don't really know how it feels. You don't really know what it is to have made 100000 so the easiest way to get there is obviously with our training of our mind, with our being able to create a habit in your mind that would help you get closer to that manifestation or that desire without feeling some type of resistance in the middle area. How do we do that? Well, you must understand that when it comes to the mind, when it comes to your subconscious and your conscious mind, you are able to create these ideas, these elaborate ideas or elaborate things that you want to experience in life. But the trick is to be able to connect with it emotionally that once you connect an emotion to that of what you're trying to manifest, your brain starts to pick it up as a reality, as something you've already experienced, as something that is real and tangible because the emotion is connected to it. So when, for example, it takes about seven to 14 days to be able to create some type of habit, right? If let's say you take about 14 days and on those 14 days, Every single day you wake up, you wake up with the notion of being thankful and being grateful um, for everything that you have, even though in your conscious level, you're aware that maybe you don't have enough. But if you start to see it as an energy, it becomes something so much more grander than that. And understanding as an example, having a roof over your head is something that not many have believe it or not. Um, being able to have a job is something that not many have. Being able to wake up and take a deep breath and realize that you have another day to experience is a blessing in that because not many were able to wake up and breathe. So when you start to become grateful, when you start to really see abundance, not just as physical money, but the absolute energy that is around you and understand that and you're and you start to vibrate from an energy of gratefulness and being thankful, genuinely thankful, not, oh, I'm so thankful for this, I'm so thankful for that, and not really connecting to the emotion. What happens is that you start to raise your vibration. And when you start to raise your vibration, when we get into the uh, manifesting of abundance, for example, or financial stability, though you may have never experienced making $100,000 a year, 
you've been doing these exercises of meditation and journaling, and you've learned to get yourself to that emotion, right? That excitement. Oftentimes people say, well, I want, you know, I want money. That's what I want. I want money. I want to be financially stable. But the root goes deeper than that. And a lot of the times, the reason why people want money is because either you want to experience financial freedom, you want to be able to travel, you want to be able to experience without having to worry about paying your everyday bills. So when you start to get really to the root of what you're trying to do, not necessarily the money and obsessing over the money in itself, but all the experiences that money can bring you, and you're connecting with those experiences, you're connecting with the excitement of what it would feel like to be able to, to, to experience going on a trip with your family, something you've never done, or going to um, a new country and being able to experience new cultures and new people, people from different walks of life. It, it's, 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 you know, it's it's an energy of newness, of excitement, of being thrilled about it, being able to, for some of you guys, maybe you've never traveled your whole lives. And it's the excitement of the wonder of what may be and really getting yourself into that energy. Once you're able to get, like I said, you're able to connect emotions with, with, with what you're trying to manifest, then you start to be very specific about what you're trying to draw in. As an example, 100,000 a year, right? So you start to, as an example, if you're doing um, journaling, you're writing down, I am experiencing being able to, uh, or I'm just about to start a job that pays me very well, that pays me whatever it is that you would make a month that would make it 100,000 a year. For some of you guys, if you're starting your own business, you would write down, uh, what you're wanting to experience. I'm so blessed and so thankful that uh, my business is booming. It's growing. I'm so excited about what is coming and what is unfolding. And money is following me everywhere. And it's opportunity after opportunity. Again, connecting with the abundance itself, not just the physical money. Why do I say this? Because like I said, we have to be not necessarily realistic, that's the reason why we use our subconscious, right? To be able to incorporate things that our wildest dreams could ever dream of, right? And you connect that to your emotions. And once that connection is triggered, it's like a spark that is connected. It's a plug that is hooked. And therefore, the motor starts to run. The motor starts to go. It starts to pick up. It starts to take traction. And then you start to experience things that unfold in your everyday life that will get you from point A to point B. That's how it happens. But we go back to not necessarily focusing specifically on the physical aspect of it. Um, abundance, you know, money, wealth, opportunity can come through different to, through different areas. It's not just, you know, as an example, I had a client that I was working with for a while and she wanted to make a specific amount of money where she was at. And in doing that and in trying to manifest that for her um, or trying for her to try to manifest that for herself, um, I had a consultation with her where I told her, well, have you ever stopped and think that maybe um, the universe, you know, is telling you this is not the place where you're going to be making that much money. And the reason I brought that up was because she was getting offers from different places that she wasn't even trying to apply and they were paying her more, but she was comfortable there. So again, once you align yourself, opportunities, people start to come into your life. Like I said, opportunities, situations will pop up that are going to pretty much propel you to where you're going, to where you want to go. And it is about listening to that little inkling, that little intuition when you need to act, you act on it. And then boom, you see yourself, you know, jump from $20,000 to $50,000 in six months, and then you keep going. And, and, and that's how manifestation happens. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't mean that one day you're just going to open the door and you're going to have a luggage there of $100,000 cash. You know what I mean? It, it is the understanding that it is energy. 
The same thing with relationships as an example. I have clients that have been working on manifesting for themselves, a partner, a relationship for quite a while. And they always tell me, you know, I'm getting to the point where I am about to give up. It just feels like it's not happening. And the the fact that they're telling me that just shows me that they have never really connected to the emotion, to the emotions, I should say, of what, what it is that they're trying to manifest. And that's where the resistance is at. You can journal all you want. You can meditate all you want. If you cannot connect on an emotional level to what you're trying to manifest, that is the resistance. And it's going to be very difficult. Yes, you can still manifest that way, but it's really difficult because there is something within you that is creating that resistance. Again, we go back to the emotion part. Emotion is everything. Think of it this way. Have you ever gone to a place where you're surrounded by specific people and or or going driving yourself to a place and you don't even know who's going to be there and there's this feeling this gut feeling like it just doesn't feel right and then you show up because obviously you ignore your intuition and then something happens or you show up and there's people there that you don't like or that you don't get along with and it's like, I should have known, I should have listened to my intuition, yet we didn't, right? Because it's so easy to question, to question our intuition. Um, and, and that's, that's what it is. You know, energy is, uh, if you really start to work towards manifesting and manifestations and uh, drawing into your life what the experiences that you want, you'll start to notice that People that are not in your frequency or in your vibration, people that are not necessarily positive, especially those that are extremely negative, will quickly, uh, you'll even no matter how close you are, they could be relatives, they could be friends, um, no matter how close you are, you'll start to notice that they start to uh, kind of pull away from you. Or when you show up to a place, it's like they'll talk to you, but little by little, they start to pull away without even realizing that they're pulling away. The reason for that is because your energy is so high. Uh, you're aligned, you're in alignment, and people that are not in that energy field are going to clash with that energy on a subconscious level. So they will either pull away or walk away or, you know, just completely disappear and leave the party or something. Um, and like I said, no matter how close you were to them at some point, if they are extremely negative and you're on this path of manifesting, you, it's going to become very noticeable, very noticeable. Um, you know, throughout my practice, I, you know, you could say I started with, you know, a huge social uh, network of friends and, and stuff. And as time progressed, I, I started to see them fall away and, you know, some people don't want to grow. Some people don't want to expand. Some people don't want to connect with their spiritual side. And if you are a person that nurtures and feeds and really works on your spiritual side, you're not going to connect with people that are very disconnected. It just seems hollow. Even maintaining casual conversation, it's almost, it becomes almost like a drag for you because you're not into small talk. Um, you, you're more of like, you like to go deep, right? You like to speak on things that excite you, that motivate you, that really create the spark of energy in you. As you progress on your journey, you'll notice this and it's very visible, <laughs> um, how you sometimes even feel awkward around people that you were extremely close to that. It almost feels like you guys have nothing to talk about anymore. And the reason for that is because their vibration is off or their vibration is not as high as your vibration. And that's okay. It's okay for us to outgrow other people. It's okay for us to want something different and other people to stay in their comfort zone and not want to grow. We can't judge them because we are all in different paths and we are walking our own path. Um, but the easiest, most quickest way of manifesting is connecting with the emotion of it. So now this is a very good GPS you can use, right? You know, it's like a navigating system. Whatever it is that you're trying to manifest into your life, if you look back as an example of relationships, if you look back and look at the partners that you've been with, 
oftentimes you will notice that there is almost this like a uh, recurring theme or recurring type of energy that you have a tendency of attracting. And that has a lot to do with the fact of how we feel about ourselves. Um, think of it as wanting to manifest a loving, nurturing, healthy relationship, yet you've never experienced that. All you've ever experienced is toxicity um, or people that you're trying to heal or people that are broken and that are trying to break you or you're trying to mother them or father them into healing and they end up just breaking you into pieces, right? Um, now, when you look at it in that aspect, you'll come to the realization, well, you know, I've never experienced, you know, love and, and, and a healthy relationship. And what is the cause of that? And again, like I said, a lot of our traumas come from early childhood. So whatever it is that we experience in childhood, what, however our parents were able to love us or not love us or, you know, show us love or even show affection towards each other, whatever it is that we were exposed to in childhood, that's what we can, that's what we, um, condition ourselves to be or to understand love to be. So if let's say it was a chaotic environment and it was violence, et cetera, et cetera, more than likely that's what you've attracted up until now. And when you're trying to manifest a healthy, loving, nurturing relationship, you have to kind of work on yourself. So yes, shadow work is very important. Why? Because we want to heal ourselves to be able to come home. I always see uh, in social media, you know, people posting quotes or memes about I'm broken and you're not broken. Let me be the first one to tell you if you've never heard this before, you're not broken. Every single experience that we have ever experienced in our life um, had a purpose and a destination, so to speak. There was a purpose behind that lesson. There was a purpose behind that heartbreak, whatever it was that we went through. There is a purpose for it, even if it is extremely traumatic, even if it is extremely uh, difficult, um, horrible sometimes. Um, and the other, the other side of it is a client that I know um, really has gone through it, and something that they never really understood was what's you know what what's the purpose behind that. And it wasn't until I guided them through a healing. And they came to the realization like, hey, I want to be there for other people that have experienced what I've experienced. I want to guide them. I want them to know that there is someone that has experienced that. I know what it feels like. And I said, you just found your purpose. You just found your calling. And that is to be a spokesman for people that have experienced everything you've experienced because you will be able to channel all of that and to heal yourself through healing others. So like I said, no matter how horrible or how beautiful your experiences have been, they've all been for a purpose, a higher purpose. And a lot of the times it's to push us and propel us to finding our true calling, whether it's as simplistic as realizing one day, you know what, I want to be there for the youth and deciding you want to be a counselor or whether it's waking up and realizing I've been through horrible shit and I have this fascination and this desire to want to understand human uh, psychology and you get into psychology, or whether it's, you know, saving lives, being a doctor, whatever the situation is, there's always a purpose behind it. So when we work on ourselves, when we work on our self-love, for example, and you start to heal and you start to realize that you're not broken, that all of the experiences that have led you to where you're at now have made you realize on a subconscious level that there is a purpose and a reason why you desire so much to be loved and to be nurtured or so much to find a healthy and loving relationship. Something I tell my clients all the time is don't ever think that you're you're at a limit or don't ever think that you can limit yourself. Um, if there is an immense craving and desire to manifest a partner, it means that that partner is out there for you. Because if it weren't, your subconscious wouldn't have that craving and that desire. You need to understand that we live in a multidimensional universe. Very uh, We have many different parallel universes. 
which is why we can, you know, jump timelines, which is why we can quantum jump, which is why we can propel us uh, through hypnosis or through uh, subliminals, you know, meditating, um, jump into the better versions of yourself, different timelines. And whether you believe it to be true or not, it is possible. And because of that, because your awareness is so fixated or desired to want to manifest a loving, healthy relationship, it means you've already attained it. Because if you hadn't experienced that already, you would have no notion of the desire of that. So think of it that way. Whenever you're trying to manifest something into your life, no matter how impossible others may tell you it is, just tell yourself. If I didn't really experience that already, I wouldn't have the understanding that that's what I want because I wouldn't have experienced that. So if I want it, I've already experienced it in a different timeline, which means you're able to draw it into this timeline. So that is the easiest way I can explain the process of being able to manifest. It is through emotion. It is through connecting. It is through... Uh, visualizing, you know, doing visualizations, feeling your way into what you're wanting to draw into your life. And again, like I said, if there's ever any doubt or you're having difficulty with that, just understand if you want to be married, for example, and it is something you highly desire and your heart skips a beat every time you think about it, understand that it's not impossible, that that is coming towards you. Why? Because your awareness is very close to it which is why you have that desire. If it weren't for you, you wouldn't even understand that that's what you want. So wanting and desiring is your GPS to the path that you should be walking towards, towards the desire, towards your life purpose. So I hope that this helps you guys a little bit better with understanding or connecting. The easiest route to manifest is through yourself. You need to understand we are energy. We are an instrument of what we attract. If up until now, all you've attracted were toxic relationships, understand and know that there is something within you, a part of you that feels like you're not whole, that feels like you need to either heal or like you need to uh, glue yourself back together and not necessarily in a negative. This is a positive thing because in understanding I've attracted nothing but toxicity means that you've devalued yourself. You've haven't loved yourself enough to understand that you deserve nothing but the best. The moment you start to vibrate from that energy, from that divine feminine energy, or from that divine masculine energy, when you start to vibrate from that, what happens? You start to notice that people start to be drawn to you, but they are much better quality people. Why? Because the more we love ourselves, the more they're able to receive that energy. The more we're desperate and we're in we're trying to force a relationship happen because we don't want to be lonely. We usually attract people that are desperate as well, or that love bomb you, but that are not genuine, that they are just desperate to find or attach their energy to someone that they can feed off of energetically wise. So again, understanding that if what you're wanting to attract and bring into your life is a healthy, loving relationship, we need to start with having a healthy, loving relationship with ourselves, learning to put ourselves as a priority, learning to love ourselves enough to create boundaries, loving ourselves enough to know never to put up with disrespect. And the moment you feel that gut telling you this felt kind of off or this is some type of disrespect, that's the moment you get up and walk away. Why? Because by doing that, you're telling the universe I know exactly what it is that I want. I know exactly what I bring to the table. And I know exactly what it is that I'm capable of bringing into this relationship. And I will not settle for anything less or anything half-assed. The moment you start to do that, again, I promise you, you're going to notice a major transition into the people you start to attract into your life. These are high-valued men or high-valued women, people that really genuinely um care for themselves and value themselves enough that they can only be so drawn to you because you're vibrating from the same energy. Well, my lovelies, I hope that this gives you guys a little bit better insight. Um, I will continue to do uh, exercises and different spells to help you guys manifest, to help you guys uh, learn the process of manifesting as well. 
as quickly as possible. Um, as you guys know, I do all the work for you guys. <laughs> so you don't have to work as hard. So take these tips, understand them on a deeper level. And I promise you guys, you will start to attract what it is that you want without any resistance. As always, my lovelies, I love you guys and I'll see you guys soon. Till then, bye-bye. Oh. <gasps>